invasion and here comes Xerxes. Uh, so we've got the Battle of Thermopylae and the Battle of Artemisium, which are essentially happening at the same time. These are the battles. Um, no, sorry, that's that's wrong. This one was the, where the movie 300 is from. Um, this one's actually happening at the same time. So um, the Greek force marches north. Um, and so they, the, the Hellenic League decided on a particular spot would be good to defend. But when King Leonidas gets there, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like the spot. So he actually takes his troops and he moves to the mountains of Thermopylae because there's only a small passage in between the two mountains. So even though there's a lot of soldiers coming, he's confident that they can stand in this narrow pa passage and hold them. Um, uh, they, hot, they build an old wall that's there and they get ready to defend themselves. Now there is a mountain path. And this mountain path, if Persia learnt about it, would essentially get behind the Spartans and essentially they could find, the Persians could get through to Greece. So Leonidas knows about it, but he hopes that they don't know about it. So he puts a couple of soldiers, not a couple, he puts a few soldiers there in order to defend it. Now when the Persians arrive, again, the battle doesn't start immediately. They kind of face off for a, for a little bit, okay? So we got some things down here very worthwhile looking at, okay, on how many soldiers that they're dealing with. Now, rather than um, me reading all of this to you, you can pause it and um, uh, read or write as you see fit. But essentially speaking, guys, how this plays out, the Persians and the, the Persian allies, they keep trying to charge the Spartans and the other soldiers. Um, and they can't get through. They're, they're just too disciplined. They're too strong. And the Greek army and weaponry is really, really strong, where the Persians are built for light um, training. They didn't learn their lesson from the first battle, so they came at it again with very light armor, whereas the, the, Spart the Greeks, I should say, particularly the Spartans, are really, really built for heavy, can take a lot of damage, and can just fight and fight and fight. And, man, they're tough. Now, it's unfortunate that a Greek trader known as Aphiltes, um, he he goes to to Persia um, with Xerxes and he tells them of a secret path that isn't really guarded. So in the dead of night, the Persians sneak some of their forces on this path, and eventually Leonidas finds out that they are going to they're going to be surrounded and ultimately they're going to die. So what he does, he sends a huge number of soldiers away, so they can fight another day. The Spartans can do as much as they can um, to to withhold them as much as possible and take as many of those Persians down as possible. So there are 300 Spartans left for that final stand. <clears throat> it should also be noted that there are some Thebans and Thespians um, soldiers there with the Spartans. It's it's not just the 300 Spartans. We just we don't really hear about the other the others um, that remained as well. Um, and um, they're essential. They're eventually killed. They're they're encircled and they fight for as long as they can. But um, all of them, including Leonidas, are ultimately killed. Um, and when they kill Leonidas, they kind of mutilate his body. I think they like chop off his head and stick it on the end of a pike and parade it around a little bit. Um, guys, it's really important to know the Battle of Thermopylae. The Greeks lost. Okay, they fought valiantly. It's one of the most heroic um, battles ever in history, and they really did humiliate the Persians a bit, but they lost, okay? Um, we're looking at 4,000 Greek losses versus, this is rough, roughly 20,000 Persian losses, okay? Um, all right. So the Battle of Artemisium, this is a naval battle, which means a battle happening on the sea, okay? Once again, um, the idea that there are 1,200 Persian ships is likely exaggerated, but they definitely had more than the Greeks. Here is a rough kind of play-by-play -play on how it happened. Persians lose a few ships to um, storms. Um, the Greeks kind of um, outsmart them a little bit, which I'm going to tell you about in a second as well. But one of the main things that you need to remember, guys, the Greeks, so we've got Thermopylae here. Okay, similar to Thermopylae, rather than Greek ships meeting them out in the open, the Greeks fight them in here, in a narrow passage that stops them getting overwhelmed by the enemy's numbers. Okay, 
Now, they managed to take out a few, um, again, the Persians lose a few ships in storms, okay? Um, one of the tactics that the Greeks use um, in order to take out a few ships was called kiklos. Now, essentially speaking, the Greek boats would um, back up towards each other. So this is the back of the ships. So they'd be facing out. They would purposely get encircled by Persian ships. Um, and then they would wait and they would wait. And then all of a sudden the boats would go, Pew! they would like really like push out at the same time and they'd catch Persian ships by surprise and they're really maneuverable and sink a few ships that way. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can read this for a play by play, but the Greeks really fight really cleverly here um, to equal out. They almost take around half of the Persian ships, which means they are wrecking the Persian strategy of a combined land and sea assault. Okay, Xerxes, or sorry, Persia even separates um, their, their ships to try and, they're going to try and come around here and then they hit the second storm. So this battle here is really, really good um, for wrecking the Persian strategy. Um, Themistocles and Eurybiades are likely together here, serving in this battle together. Now, the result for Artemisium, it doesn't really end in a victory. The Greeks do end up retreating once they hear that the Battle of Thermopylae is lost, um, but the Persians lost over half their ships and really, really delayed. Um, so they can't get to Thermopylae. Um, Persia can now not split their navy and send them elsewhere, which was really vital for them to for that to uh, their strategy to work. Okay, but Persia do get to Greece and they can essentially move into south and central Greece um, and on to sack Athens. Now the Greek fleet is still in good shape, which becomes immensely important for later. But don't forget, Persia goes into Athens and burns a lot of it to the ground. But a lot of Athens were a lot of the Athenians were able to actually. Um, flee, uh, evacuate the city. They leave like the old and the sick behind who are slaughtered by Persia.